Good evening to you all, and we wish you a blessed Lent as we begin this Ash Wednesday service. Please note for you folks online, this is a communion service. Please um, take a moment to gather communion elements. Also here live, we will be doing the imposition of ashes. So at home, if you have something to use instead of ashes, find it. Suggestions are a burnt cork, a Sharpie. Some people use adhesive stickers. Other people simply do an invisible sign of the cross on their forehead. Whatever works for you. Our, our Lenten season begins. Hear these words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, every year at Easter during the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare this celebration, to practice with discipline, daily repentance, our daily dying and rising in union with Christ. We begin this season by acknowledging our need for repentance, for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our congregation invites you to observe this season of Lent through self-examination, and penitence, prayer and fasting, reading and meditating on the Word of God and works of love and witness. Let us bow before God, our Creator and Redeemer, and confess our sin. Let us all join in our prayer of confession. Lord God, it is hard to think that we will die someday. We dream, make plans, and talk about what we'll do in the near future. We don't always think about what you want. Instead, we make choices that we think are good for us, but we are only here because you take care of us. We confess that we forget we need you all the time. We confess that sometimes we make choices that aren't what you want. We don't know what is best for our lives, holy God. We are sorry for our sin. Help us to remember we live because of you. Help us to do what you want us to do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We begin our Lenten journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. This ancient sign speaks of the frailty and uncertainty of human life, calls us to the heartfelt repentance, urges us to place our hope in God alone. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes remind us of our mortality and penitence. Teach us again that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So anyone here in person would like to receive ashes, I'll be dispensing them on your hand with a spoon using gravity so there's no touch, and uh, put them on your own forehead. Come up if you would like. From dust you have come, to dust you shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
From dust you have come, to dust you shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From dust I have come, and to dust I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give us, give us contrite hearts. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, Heal us by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak words of pardon and peace. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join me in our hymn number 320. <laughs> scripture this evening is um, from the book of Daniel, his ninth chapter. Hear these words. In the first year of Darius, son of Ashurias, by birth a Mede, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books the number of years that according to the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah must be fulfilled for the devastation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Then I turned to the Lord 
to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession saying, Ah, Lord, great and awesome God, keeping covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame as at this day falls on us. The people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, and all the lands to which you have driven them. Because of the treachery that they have committed against you, open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him, have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a calamity so great that what has been done against Jerusalem has never been done before under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favor of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all that he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made your name renowned even to this day, we have sinned, we've done wickedly. O Lord, in view of all your righteous acts, let your anger and wrath, we pray, turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and the iniquity of our ancestors. Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all our neighbors. Now, therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant, to his supplication. For your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation in the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen and act and do not delay for your own sake. O my God, because your city and your people bear 
your name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, well, we've got a calamity. It's called COVID. Remember, it was just a little more than a year ago, we went on a lockdown before COVID. And a lot of people are doing okay financially, the ones who could work from home. A lot of people became unemployed. They're suffering economic calamity. A lot of people are grieving the loss of friends and loved ones. Sometimes it feels like Chicken Little. Remember Chicken Little? The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Yeah, it feels a little like that. But you know, it's not unprecedented. The people of Israel felt that. Matter of fact, they have it worse than we do today. That's what Daniel was writing about. Daniel was writing during the Babylonian exile. When enemy armies came into Jerusalem, destroyed the place, knocked down the temple and the buildings, and hauled most of the population of Israel out of Israel into the land of Babylon. Those folks had lost everything. They, they, they had lost their temple. They'd lost their great city, Jerusalem. A lot of them had suffered deaths for a few reasons. One, malnutrition during the siege of Jerusalem. Some violent deaths. Others died of exhaustion along the way, all the way from Jerusalem to Babylon. And, and here the people of Israel, 
were wondering would they ever see their beloved Jerusalem again? Would life ever be normal once again? Would prosperity ever be restored? And in the midst of all that, Daniel, Daniel becomes a town official and then a national official in Babylon. It said that God speaks through him and it said that he is righteous. He becomes an advisor to even the king of Babylon. Now, if anyone doesn't need to repent, it's him. We're told he really is pure. And God really does speak to him. But in the midst of all this calamity, he says, God, you're right. Your people have sinned. Yes, we do deserve this. Now, a righteous person is saying that which is hard to fathom, but he's making a plea not for himself, but for all of Israel. And Israel had been warned not to be pagan worshipers, but king after king after king had put up pagan altars within Jerusalem. And the prophets had said, don't do it. Do not put anyone above God. And they didn't listen. And that's why they were in the state. They were in when Daniel began his prophecy. And even though those people had sinned, he was repenting on their behalf to God. And what's his simple message? God, yes, we all deserve this, but show mercy. No, we don't deserve. No, we're not entitled. God, show mercy. God, don't let your anger last for. Wow, if this is a message we need today, here it is. We as a church, just like Daniel, need to make prayers for our whole nation. Doesn't matter if people are innocent or guilty, we pray for them. That's one of our jobs. Do we pray? for the world. The other thing we must keep in mind during this Lenten journey is, you know, we're not entitled to anything. No, we're not entitled. As a matter of fact, if things were just, we would probably have lives much worse off than we do. For us, we get angry if we have to wait for anything. Now, 10 minutes waiting for something? Hey, I'm entitled to better than that, right? But in much of the world, the wait isn't 10 minutes. It can be 10 hours to get proper services. No, we're not entitled. There are times when our nation puts many things before God. And there are times we personally put things in front of God. And wow, we're in a calamity. So what do we do? Pray. Pray for the world. 
and ask God to make his mercy greater than his punishment. And pray that calamity will not last forever. It's a season of Lent, a season of repentance. Let's not only pray prayers of penitence for ourselves, but let's do it. Let's do it on behalf of this entire world. But as we do it, let's remember God has a long history with the people of Israel and the Church of Jesus Christ. And what we've always found is God's mercy wins out in the end. So as we pray repentance, let us pray with hope. And Let's use this time to make ourselves better that we might, with even more purity next year, lift our prayers on behalf of all those who need it. So let that be our Lenten mission. I hope you're all on board with me on that each and every day, like Daniel. Let's pray for the nation, pray for the world, but trust in God's mercy. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in our hymn number 302. This is a public service announcement. Please remember, shortly we'll be having celebration of Holy Communion. Those of you who are celebrating online, please remember your communion elements. Also, I would point out to you that 
to keep these broadcasts going, to keep our congregation going, we depend on on Christian tithers. So please, if you are here, we've got an offering plate in the back. If not, if you're at home, please be generous with your check or with the link Tithely on our website. We need your financial support for all that we do. God bless you and your offering. God, we bring our offerings and ourselves to your throne. Use our offerings and use us to glorify your name and grow your kingdom here. In Jesus' own name we pray. Amen. And so we begin our Lord's Supper, part of this Lenten journey. Please see on your rung bulletin, PowerPoint, or on our screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. You are our God and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the breath of life and set us in your world to love and serve you. When we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in obedience and in love. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs, with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The night he was betrayed, the Lord took bread and he, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, all of you, take this and eat it. This is my body broken for you. 
So it is we eat this bread together. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. After supper, Jesus took a cup and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it. All of you, he said, drink this. This is the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you eat and drink in remembrance of me. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Let us pray. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people to yourself. Following his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 314.
I am delighted that you joined with us tonight. May your Lenten journey be blessed. Follow Christ more fully and completely. May he guide you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.